Are you ready? What's my name? What's my, what's my name? What's, say Kareem Miley. Say Kareem Miley. You're listening to the Hip Hop Debate Show. Okay, so hear me out. The official podcast of Kareem Miley. In about two seconds, Kareem Miley will begin to speak. Kareem Ali TV, Are You Serious Podcast. We back again, discussing various topics through the lens of hip hop culture. We got back some familiar guests. It's a delay on my shit. We got Tislam the Great, Lyrical Leviathan, Slanks the Hero. I hated that you make me call you different fucking names. It gets irritated because you'll change in the middle of the show and then I got to call you something different. Ty Hill just chooses to slick with Slanks. They're like, fuck you, nigga. You're Slanks all the time. Got the ill Ty Hill cards face up podcast. You know what I'm saying? And uh, Jay Swan with the, the Black Mama Kobe Bryant shirt, MC. My God, that, that missed. You didn't you didn't flick your wrist. Okay, I so, that. All needs rotation. So earlier, you know, <laughs> earlier this week, T-Pain made a statement that I've heard a lot over the years that people have said all the time that Tupac wasn't really a great lyricist. Um, what do you what do you think about that? He he said it in such a tone where it's almost as if Tupac was trash or something like that. But a lot of people have said that Pac was not someone that would rank on anyone's list of MCs as, as far as being lyrical. If Instagram and Twitter were popping, like when Pac was like beefing, like imagine how entertaining that would have been. <laughs> I'm not going to lie to you. Pac would have got killed sooner. Yes. And, yes. and, yes. and, and, the- and, and he would have got his ass ate the fuck up. What? Hey, yo. <laughs> Lyricism wise, Pac would have got ridiculously murdered. Yeah. Who? Because it's because it's out right here for real. Be- bro, Pac was the crazy lyricist at our time because ain't nobody else have no platform. Yo, and I'm going to keep it real with you. Really I'm going to cool. disagree respectfully with that just because look at what drill music is now. Like, fuck lyrics, it's all about disrespect. And when you say, yo, that's why I fuck your bitch. That's right. That's, but that's what I'm saying. That's but that's what I'm saying. If the if the platforms would have been what they are now, Pac would have got ate the fuck up. What do you guys say about that? I'm gonna go with uh, I'm gonna go with Ty Hill first because you made a statement that Tupac at, at one point was your goat. But then you said earlier <laughs> that Jay Z was the goat, and uh, it's I, I, it's a hypocritical. It's a, I, I it's a lot. Of, it's a lot. Of, it's a lot of room. It's a lot of room for goats. So I have a few of them. Okay. You'll hear my favorites. Oh, goat farm. Um, oh, you got a whole but, farm. Yeah, it's it's, it's 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 a goat farm. It's about five of them. Um, I but no, them, so I don't got to say about that. You know, it's all it's all dependent upon what my mood is. So I go off a of mood. But um, Jay <laughs> Pac was not lyricist to the point of being the lyrical. You know, y'all favorite word, the double entendres, and you know all of that type of slick shit. But we also have Pac is the most felt artist I think in history, next to DMX to me. The music that he put out there was painting of pictures type of music. That That's the type of stuff that I love. So, you know, when you talk about an artist to say, my mission is to be more than just a rap musician, the elevation of today's generation, if I can make them listen. Like, that's some shit to me. It but is. it might not be to nobody else. Even learn You know what I'm saying? So when you got a person like Biggie, you know, who <laughs> Slangston made him sound like Bill Cosby rapping earlier, but <laughs> it was the women, um, the women to the bleak. Yeah, that's he's the women to the bleak. That takes a whole different meaning now. <laughs> Look, but when you're talking about yeah, like Pac's not gonna get, he Pac can't get in a circle with fucking um uh uh what 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 it. Abomatomically, philosophies, philosophies, and how about the like he's, he's gonna walk out of that circle if we're talking just lyrical bars. But that's why I kicked Inspector Deck off of Gummy Mommy. You, you had oh. to, right? He had to, like it was so. But Pac is the greatest to me, just off of the felt music of something that can last forever. That music lasts from early 90s, and we're still talking about him 25 years after his death, and we're still comparing him. So when you got a person like T Pain, who just says a lot of shit. Just, I mean, T Pain is literally Takashi Six Nine out here right now. Like he's ratting on everybody. It's, he's oh. just trying to make a headline. You got this man just now told Akon was out here uh, double booking shows with his brother. Like, why are you snitching? Like, I, I don't understand what T Pain is doing. It's just to grab headlines at this point. But when you say these artists can beat Pac or Pac couldn't stand up to him, who the fuck are the artists? Who are they? Mm-hmm. 
I mean, we, you would have to name them. So I, I went through this debate with a friend online and he goes to name, well, we talking J. Cole, Kendrick, nigga, they aren't new artists. These niggas are old as shit now. They, they damn near 40 now. They, They've been out we, for more than a decade, like 12 years. Yeah, these niggas, they, they class of 08, 09. Like, 12, 14 new, years. New artists. So who's, who, who are we putting in this circle against Tupac? And why is Pac the only one got to stand against new niggas? Like, we ain't trying to compare fucking Jay-Z to Dirk. So I, I would say this about, about Tupac. In, in real time, even though I liked Tupac a lot back then, Me Against the World, I didn't like it as much when he went to death row. But that's because back then I was righteous ream and very judgmental about content and different stuff. But from a lyrical standpoint, back then, because it was so many great lyricists out in the 90s, he didn't really shine. But as I've listened to Tupac over the years and I look back, I'm like, you know, a lot better than I thought it was. And compared to a lot of people that are current, Tupac sounds lyrical as shit when I listen to the radio today, and I try not to do that. I think Tupac is one of the greatest hip-hop artists of all time and one of the greatest songwriters we heard right up there with Jay-Z. Now, I wouldn't put him in the same MC category as a Nas or a Rakim or a Busta Rhymes or something like that, but he had a different style, a different approach. I actually would put him closer to a, uh, a KRS-One. <laughs> Just to fuck with Ty Hill. Uh, uh, Slate, so what... What do, you have, what do you have to say about this? Uh, you just this disrespect issue. the dead man. <laughs> I mean, first of all, what's wrong with KRS? <laughs> oh, it's <laughs> a different show. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, okay. He, even though he's, he, he often sounds like Chris Parker, he sometimes hates on the prowess of one of the God and Seeds. It is. So, on me? Yes. <laughs> no, I wasn't yeah. hating KRS One. I, 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 Ty Hill hates KRS One. Oh, oh, yeah, we know. Don't, don't, don't send me on my KRS one rant. <laughs> please, please, different show. I will, I will turn off the camera. And walk oh off. my god! And yeah, listen, I just had MC Shan on my show too. It's fucking hilarious. I wanted to say I, I was being nice through the whole thing, but I wanted to say, yeah, man, fuck KRS. <laughs> Not MC Shan, but the MC stands for more crack. Okay, listen. First of all, exactly. we can't we can't in all we can't be so intelligent if we were to take the opinions of one T Pain but so serious. Um, like T Pain, like the T stands for troll. Um, but when just examining a lot of times how people analyze and appraise Tupac as an MC, um, again, I always in these conversations come back to the to the proof in the pudding that is that we all are prisoners to our own biases. Um, and those biases are informed and formed in our formative years in so many different ways. For me, when Tupac was, was coming out with, you know, Me Against the World and 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 um and those those really those really big Tupac records that dropped, I was in sixth grade. And um, in the sensationalization of Tupac at the time, and then this was this was before Ready to Die had even came out. Like my mind was blown. I was totally captivated by Tupac. Um, and so my appreciation for him was formed really early on. And, and so I would often take the Tupac side in a lot of the debates, even in the, the versus Biggie back then. And I think that over the years, my appreciation and in in what I can contribute to the debates has a, a a bit of a slight on it because people look at I mean I've even used it as a bar before like as basic as a Tupac rhyme scheme but different MCs have different skill sets and Tupac's skill set and what he could do so well was so well honed like people like even T Pain said like oh I'll look at him as a poet and people often look at like oh as MC as if it's not poetry and if having poetic skills that you can apply to songwriting actually gives you an advantage as an MC and makes and you better rap and rhythm and poetry yeah. right like and if, if you look at a lot of Tupac songwriting like he was a master at various poetic devices and techniques like he he crushed with alliteration on on a on a regular basis the way he would use alliteration to tell a story or to diss the shit out of somebody like how he would use imagery how he would use storytelling like and then if you look in the songs like changes where the content 
content is so strong, but lyrically he's still killing it. Like the way he would put together multi-syllabic words in a way that was not emphatic, but subtle. Like Tupac was an amazing writer and an amazing MC. And, and oftentimes that gets overlooked because his style wasn't the typical New York bar, 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 you know, staccato style. He, but he was actually using a, a writing technique that appealed to more people outside of just people who listen to lyricism, but still doing it at a very high skill level. Like for the longest time, it's changed over time, but for the longest time, the lowest that I would rate Tupac on the all time list was third. Um, and so for me, like what T-Pain said, it's, it's, it's blasphemy to be honest. Like it's literally blasphemous to say that Tupac would get lyrically crushed in this era. Cause that makes no sense because this era, the skill level in the mainstream is emphatically lower than it was in that era. Like, and like still there, was, there was so many amazing MCs at the time that it was actually harder to shine lyrically then. Now, T Tupac would look like would look like freaking Amir e. Baraka next to people on the radio now. Like his his, you could do entire his bars entire, would be on steroids. It'll be ridiculous. <laughs> you could do entire syllabi about about Tupac songs in comparison to to what people are rapping in the mainstream now. Like let's, let me so go like, Swan real quick. Who, Swan who would, who would, who would crush Tupac lyrically right now? Like outside of like a, maybe three or four people who have mainstream record play. Like forget about it. He, he'd be having a what field day. Cool. Swan, and then, what and do then you have to say like, about this? Well, um, yeah. T Pain is definitely wrong. <laughs> He's definitely wrong. Um, you see, but Tupac, I don't think he is the greatest lyricist. He's not. But the way he puts his emotions and energy into towards his craft is like genius. Like Snoop Dogg even said it in like one of his uh interviews that Tupac was one of the fastest writers that he ever seen. He'll do like what, maybe three songs in a day. That's just genius level in my opinion and like um when you when he uh t-pain will say like an artist from this era like will destroy tupac on the main street sound i'm thinking like who like like what ty hill when uh he said like who will beat him like it's not too many you know what i'm saying but like pac i mean his it's just you know his level as far as like as an MC, I feel like is really overlooked. And like his first uh hip hop name was MC New York, and people didn't really know about that. They never knew that. Yeah, and um, yeah, and like I'm gonna say this too, uh the Machiavelli album is really overlooked. I feel like that's probably his best work besides me against the world. Islam, what 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 are your Are you still jokes? down is very good too? Yeah, that mm -hmm. is a very good. When it, comes, when it comes to Tupac, um, I can admit, I in the beginning of my appreciation for music and hip hop, I didn't like Tupac. I didn't like none of his music. I was totally anti-Pac. Um, I thought Big was okay. To be to be honest with you, it wasn't until later on in my life that I think you no know, to, to appreciate Big. And it took me, I'm be honest with you, becoming a man to like Tupac. That's just my opinion. Call it a nigga who grew up in the suburbs and only visited, I you mean, know, East Side to go see my father. Call it, that's what I was exposed to and, and surrounded by due to my community. But it, it's just, I guess, I was one of those hard headed, strictly underground backpacker nigga when I first came to music. It was like, if you weren't coming at a certain level of, and I'm not, not, not saying it didn't, it's just that where my mind was at. It wasn't a certain level of words and schemes and patterns coming across. And if the beats were boom back, I, did, I wasn't with it. It wasn't until I matured as a person and was able to other sounds and content and come out of that box where, yeah, Tupac is definitely up there. He definitely, I consider him to be more than an MC, more than a rapper. He's a griot. He, he is, he's a martyr that was able to bring about change politically and socially that a lot of MCs and artists are scared to do. I mean, he was willing to go hand and toe to toe. So as a man, and then going back and listen to his lyrics and what he was doing, I can see that he would just a picture. He was telling a story. He, he, I mean, he was doing those deeds as well, but it was more as him trying to let them know, like, what's going on ain't my fault. Here it is in bar form. I'm letting you know that the dumb shit 
and the ill wills of this planet through my lyrics. And I greatly appreciate for that. Two Pain should not even speak upon that man ever through his mouth in any kind of conversation. That nigga's puss. He's whack. I don't think he has the, the talent to even speak on the skills that Tupac has. So for him to try to even think that some new guy on the scene is going to last a moment in the presence of Tupac, let alone on the mic, is blasphemy. So I think we can just end this show right now and just all conclude that T-Pain's a dumbass. A disrespectful dumbass. When he played Meatball on the live action version of Aqua Teen Hunger Force. T-Pain actually can sing. I heard oh him sing for real. He can sing. I don't know why he even did the uh, auto-tune thing. Yeah. Man, T-Pain, he did the auto-tune because I agree with what he said. T-Pain puss because this the same nigga that allowed Usher to make him cry on a plane. Whoa. So he's a different breed of human. I He's a different breed that. of human, you know. And yeah, because Usher mm, said that he destroyed. That. Oh yeah, said he said that he he's I Usher, that he's, he was all he said Usher came to him and told him that he destroyed music or something like that with the. Uh, oh the, yeah, the, I remember him saying. Oh, wow. Yeah, that that hurt his feelings. He was his feelings was hurt by Usher. Usher. Let it burn, hurt his feelings. So yeah, Usher is savage. You know, it's 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 weird. I hate that. I hate the disrespect pockets. I fucking hate it. Like, it, it, they literally be, everybody has something to say. Now, I get it from the younger generation that just don't know who the fuck he is. That's cool. You ain't got to go back and listen to him. They, they get a pass for it. They should. But for the people, they should. For the people that know who the fuck he is, you can't say no. How the fuck is it? The best example of this show was literally, this man survived the best era of hip hop. And sure dominated it. In many categories. Dominated. Dominated. So what the fuck couldn't he do today? Like, how does that, it, it don't even make sense. Seriously. That's like saying, you. <laughs> it doesn't make sense. It, it, it doesn't make sense. He survived with some of the greatest lyricists to ever exist. Ever, niggas to ever put pen to pad. And, and, and he made it out. Times. We talking and about a person who came from that late 80s where the greatest of the lyricists exist. <laughs> and he still got a chance to come up, make a name in, Come on now, man. Mm -hmm. T-Pain saying yeah, about, about how 20 years one been affected the, the one question, that's the elephant in the room. Is Tupac still alive? No. Oh, if right. you've seen season three of Atlanta, that may have been answered. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 he just died a couple he, days. <laughs> I don't think he... No, I don't think he's alive. I'm going to tell you why, right? Pac is a tension yeah. whore. Yeah. Pac right. can't shut the fuck up. Pac would have showed up some fucking where... Trying to Nine hide and disguise yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I don't even want to get into the, the rabbit hole of that. That's Langston's category. But um, I think what happens with art, it often appreciates over time. But humans also evolve over time. And what T-Pain said about the 20-year gap is completely illogical because not only would he have became more skilled over time artistically as a human being based off the things he was talking about and the things he started to, to rebel against, he would have evolved so much as a human being over time. At some point in the last 20 years, he probably would have stopped rapping and probably started an organization. He probably been a greater actor. actor. Tupac, I mean, <laughs> Tupac wasn't even a man when he died. Like, he was 20, like, 25 years old. He hadn't yeah. even developed into a man. Right, yeah, like the songs would have been written you, over time would have, I, I would have evolved so one much. One second, one second. Tisson, what you want to say? I said, uh, when it comes to two part, uh, just pick it back, you know, off, off of Slankston, um, Lyrical Advisor, that given the content of what has happened over the past 20 years, imagine Pop having all that at his at his tips to write about. Right. To express. Imagine, imagine how different all the would be if Imagine all the revolutionary shit he would have popped off one buck. He'd have been in the streets and in the booth all the time, like, he would have made we, 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 some we, little ones. We talking about a country. Oh. We talking about a a, a, a place in hip hop that is allowing Meek Mill to be the the, the face of uh, <laughs> a, a police re prison reform. Can you imagine what Pac would have did out here? Oh man! Oh. If he wasn't <laughs> like dead already, they'd have had to kill him. <laughs> they, they, he they, he would have yeah, made, made the really Pimp did. a Butterfly yeah. first. He would have made that out listen, with and better. Yeah. That was a Tupac influence, right? And snippets all throughout the album. Like he would have just made the album himself. Imagine if Pac never died, the impact he would have had on 
the young writers coming up and the, the, the direction that hip hop might have went in from a skill standpoint had Pac lived or people taking concept more seriously. Pac, Pac would have still had a lane. It, it's impossible to stop that lane, but just the growth that he would have had, like the pencil butterfly, was a great example. You know, it it, it you know, we didn't get the full full from full from Pac. Like we didn't get a grown Pac. We got a fucking child. You realize we grown ass men talking about a kid? 23 years old. 23 Maybe. years old. Listen, when, like most of his best stuff is coming out. I think we, I was he, imagine oh, what he would have did as an actor and his his impact of film. Because as an yeah. actor, he was great too. That too. You know what? He probably would have been Black Panther as well if he was alive. Think about it. <laughs> Where'd Where that come from? He probably would have been Black Panther. He'd have been Killmonger. He'd have been Killmonger. This shit became a Tupac can do it episode. <laughs> I would can't turn Tupac do for right you. you my, my visual cannot unsee Pac's face on Black Panther's body. You, you <laughs> fucked my head up right now. I can see him being Killmonger. Yo, he'd have been himself. a better Killmonger, actually. He'd have been a better hey, yo, Killmonger. It'd have been ridiculous. That was fucking a good one, yo. Understand this, man. I think oh, we got to put Pac in a place, a category, in a space of you can't compare him anymore. It, it's just one of those things. It's, it's, it's fucking... You can't. You you literally can't, man. It's too much music, too much talent, and he was only 20, 25 fucking years old when he died. He can't be compared. We can't compare him to Biggie. We can't compare him to nobody. Nobody had that work ethic of a Tupac that made it to that level. Nobody is still running off of 25-year death and still being talked about in all conversation from new, young, to old. You know, like, it, we got to retire Tupac name in all comparisons. It, he made it enough don't... music to almost keep putting it out this long. And this is without anybody even getting the real shit. Like, you still got, I did an interview with his best friend, Mouse Man, you know. It's still music that ain't been put out. Because Man, nobody... It's, it's some former faculty members from Baltimore School of the Arts who got recordings he did when he went to high school in Baltimore. Like, yep. right. like so much material was created in such a small amount of time. Like, just that alone cements, like, Legacy. Right. That's all we need, man. T Pain is a dumbass. And he's soft and uh yeah, soft as Twinkie filling. For it's saying something like that. Disrespectful, but disrespecting the great Tupac, Tupac would have did auto tune better. <laughs> <laughs> I mean he kind of did earlier on when he was using a lot of the you know the Roger Talk Trout and stuff on California <laughs> Love. Like that's that's Talk really writing wrong. ability was up here. It was ridiculous. Uh, I mean his use of melody, understanding how to create and have the R and B influence in the songs to make you really want to listen. And then the the passion and the in his voice. He uh, did that shit cadence. with Suge Knight behind him. Can you imagine the 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 the, <laughs> the fear <laughs> being in the studio? Uh, he, had, he didn't have a tremendous amount of heart. I mean, that's what it seemed like. To People in Baltimore didn't think so, but... To still be I able to create in that environment? <laughs> Is Tupac the Jordan of rap? I want to know. No. Again... So to do that, you have to be literally technically the best. Both Jordan be and... Both Jordan and the Jordan of rap have, again, the same haircut. Um, <laughs> uh, Jordan of rap, William Griffin That's Raymond Lee does, yeah. Uh, Oh, Some people say Rock Kim is no longer the Jordan of rap. He's not a Dr. J of rap. That's a different show. Okay. And <laughs> some would say the Dr. J. Which of Dr. Rap J. Was... The ABA was unbelievable. It's not like you know he just pioneered all the shit. So was Tupac Magic Johnson? Is he uh, woke? Uh, uh, Magic Johnson has been underrated recently. Yeah, we did a show about that. People trying to say Steph Curry's better. We, we uh, I put that to bed though. To put that to bed. So that's all. Who, 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 Roger, Roger Goodell. What's, what what's, what's the man that run? Who runs the NBA? Uh, Adam Silver. That's that's Tupac. Roger Goodell. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's not in the fucking league no more. Like he just runs shit. Like he's <laughs> the father. You know, it's just it's just what it is, man. All right, man. That's that's all we got. We don't. It's, it's no more. Uh, it's a good episode of Are You Serious? You guys are fucking hilarious. And um, I Much like your differences of opinions. Serious. Ty Hill, thank you for coming out. Tislam, appreciate it. Go tuck your forehead in so the motherfuckers as well. Oh, I love you, turtle head motherfucker. The Yo, everybody subscribe to my page turtle. over at Cards, Cards Face Up Podcast, Cards Face Up TV. I'm fine. Subscribe. Definitely do it. Cards Face Up Podcast. That's a dope-ass podcast, but you be having some real guests on there. I really, I really respect that shit.
I appreciate you. I respect yeah. y'all, man. All you brothers, what y'all doing? This has been wonderful. It's always a pleasure, man. I thank y'all. Jay Swan, Ty Hill, Leviathan, Tislam. Are you serious, Vet? Very serious. All right. So I have to stand here today as what I was when I was born, a black man. Your racism bounces off me, I'm bulletproof. Your prejudice gets deflected, I'm bulletproof. Your hatred can't penetrate me, I'm bulletproof. Our minds can't be shackled no more, nah, we know the truth. Yeah, from the spot that Malcolm stood, looking out through the window, I'm looking out over my hood.